Welcome back to EGE 2013 Statics. Today we're going to talk about moments or the moments created by a force, sometimes referred to as a torque. Um, we'll spend just a couple of minutes, I'll try to do it quickly, on the definition just kind of as a refresher and so I can give you a couple of pointers on that. And then we'll give you a couple of different examples um, where we're doing the scalar definition. So if, if we recall, a moment by definition is equal to a force times a distance. And let me draw you a picture here. If this is a vector representing the force and it, this is a vector representing the distance, um, it's in this point here, we'll call it A, point A. Um, it's the distance between the axis or origin of your moment and the perpendicular distance between that force and, and that axis, okay? So whatever that perpendicular distance is times the force that gives you your moment. The actual moment in this case is, is at, um, now let me draw it try to draw it in more of a perspective. If this is my force and my distance comes out here, I'm creating a plane, a force distance plane, and my moment is at right angles to that plane, okay? So is that, does that kind of make sense there, the way I've got it drawn? I hope so. Um, so the moment is actually the axis, the the vector that defines the moment is the axis of that about which that moment is happening and the magnitude is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of that perpendicular distance. Um, and the sign of it, of the moment, in this case, if you look at it, we're, we're creating a counterclockwise moment. We're going this way, okay? Uh, that is a moment in the positive direction. And if you were to look at this picture here, if we were to say that this is our origin, and this is our x-axis here, and this is our y-axis here, I guess they kind of go like that, okay? Um, and this is the z, you can see that, you know, according to our convention, the way we've been drawing all of these, we have a, a positive x-direction, the force is in a positive y direction, and our moment is in a positive z direction. So it's a positive moment due to that uh, counterclockwise rotation. And on, on this, if we look at our example over here on, to the left, you know, since the, I'm creating a counterclockwise uh, moment, my moment would be essentially coming out of the page about that point in that example, okay? Uh, it can get confusing. There's a couple ways to remember which to figure it out. One is the right-hand rule, and I'll go down here. Um, take your right hand, curl your fingers in the direction of the rotation or the direction of the moment, and your thumb points in the positive direction. Okay? So if, if we were counterclockwise, my right-hand thumb is pointing up counterclockwise, my thumb ends up pointing down or in the, you know, so my thumb is pointing in the negative direction. I was saying it's positive. Positive is up, negative is down. It's a better way to say it than your thumb points in the positive direction because <laughs> in the other way, it's, your thumb is pointing down and down is our negative Z direction. Okay? Uh, one caution here I will give you. Um, if This is where left-handed people have an advantage. You know, if you're right-handed and you've got something in your hand and you're taking a test and you're doing your homework and you're busy writing, 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 and you need the direction of the moment and you just take your free hand and stick it in the air, you just stuck your left hand in the air and you've got the wrong answer, right? Voice of experience. Um, you got to put, put the pencil down, pick up, use your right hand. So it, it's a right-hand rule, not any convenient hand rule, okay? So that's our definition. Um, another well, another way to remember it, let me just erase this, is, is you can kind of draw the I, J, K 
decay unit vectors around a circle, and when you go counterclockwise, that's plus. When you go okay, and when you go counterclockwise, that's that's a negative. Okay, um, you can think of it as I J K increasing in alphabetical order. The only catch is when you go from K to I, you overflow. You know, you might you have to start over, but the I J K is generally increasing, and that's positive. Another way to remember it, but most people use the right-hand rule. This case over here on the left, uh, you know, we're going from the minus y to the plus x. That's a positive. If I was going from plus x to minus y, that would be a negative moment pointing into the page. So let's run the numbers here. Oh, before I run numbers, we said it's defined as the perpendicular distance. Um, and you can see here that our angle is 54.4 degrees. That's not perpendicular, right? Point where it's perpendicular here. Okay, so this is my perpendicular distance. And so the force times that, per my force of 8.48 newtons times that perpendicular distance, um, that distance happens to work out to be um, 0.152 meters times the sine of our angle, which is sine, yes, it is sine, 54.4, and that's equal to 0.124 meters. So if I do my force times my distance, my moment equals 8.48 Newtons times 0.124 meters, and that's equal to 1.05 Newton meters. Oh, I didn't mention units, did I, uh, in the definition? Units are force times distance, Newton meters, foot pounds, that sort of thing. Um, I will caution you just a little bit. Sometimes you will, some sources, um, particularly when you're using English units, they'll use foot-pounds for torque and pound-feet for work, the concept of work, a force acting over a distance. Um, make sure you understand the conventions wherever you're working and whatever it is, uh, whether it's foot-pounds, pound-feet. Uh, generally, for a moment, on metric, we just tend to use newton meters. Uh, and understand the difference between work and a moment. Work is a force applied across the distance so if I take my something and I push on it with a force and I displace it some distance here, um, I've done work, right? But for a moment, I don't need that displacement. It's just a force applied at a distance versus over a distance, okay? Even though the units, length times force, are the same in both cases. Another way I could do this rather than finding this perpendicular distance, I can um, I'll erase that because that's not what we're using. I can take the component of the force that's perpendicular to whatever axis I have handy, and we had previous, in our previous example, we calculated that perpendicular component of the force being equal to 6.91 newtons, and I have my length here of 15.2 centimeters, so I can calculate moment equals 0.1, no, let's do it, let's be consistent for change, 6.91 newtons times 0.152 meters, and that comes out to, surprise, surprise, 1.05 newton meters. And as it turns out, I can draw, if I have this line that represents the direction that that force is acting, I can draw a line anywhere I want, and if I calculate the component of the force that's perpendicular to that line, I will get the same answer. So I can calculate my moment at any point along the line that represents the direction of that force, the line of the force, okay? And that will come in handy later on. So that's that example, um, and, and uh, I should say uh, the word I meant to use here, this is actually a position vector, right, from 
our origin to the point along this force. That's the position vector, and we want the force perpendicular to that position vector. And that will be important later on. Let's do another example, slightly more complicated. Okay, here I've taken a crow's foot socket and attached it to my wrench, and I didn't try to merge the pictures, okay? We'll just say that fat black line represents our wrench. It's 15.2 centimeters as before. We've applied the same force at the same place on the handle of the wrench. The only difference is we've moved our axis of rotation, the axis where our, our um, moment occurs or where we want to find the moment. We want to find the moment about this point A because that's the point that's the center of the bolt that we're trying to twist, right? We want to know how much torque we're putting on that bolt. So we want the moment relative to that point there. Um, now I've got some funny things going on. I could, I could draw a single position vector from here to our force and do the math that way. Or since I have the components of this force uh, perpendicular to the handle, uh, parallel to the handle, I have the perpendicular distance between the center line of my handle and that point A, I can just simply cre uh, calculate this as the sum of a of the um, moments using uh, this force here and the perpend this perpendicular distance, okay? And this force here, the 6.9, which I can extend this way and get this perpendicular distance, okay? How would we do that? Well, it's just, we'll just say that our moment A, our moment about point A is our 6.9 equals 6.91 newtons times our perpendicular distance, per, uh, of 15.2 or 0.152 meters, and that's positive because that's going in a counterclockwise direction. And our force of 6.9 newtons acting at a distance of 3 centimeters, if I extend that force, um, that's actually going clockwise, so that's a negative moment, minus 6.90 newtons times uh, 0 0.03 meters, right? And that gives me a value of 8.43 newton meters, okay? And that's less than what we had before because now we have this, or we had 1.05, I think. 1.05, yes. Um, so now I've got 8.43, that's because We've added this crow's foot, and we had um, a angle to our applied force, which was essentially counteracting. If my applied force had been strictly in this direction, adding that crow's foot would make, or this direction, I'm drawing it backwards, had been strictly in that direction at a 90-degree at a angle, putting that crow's foot there wouldn't have done anything. Okay, I've just kind of created a long linkage. But because our because we had this at an angle here of 54.4, not 90, um, I have that second component to the moment, and it happens to be negative. Okay, that's about it. Uh, next up, we'll come up with uh, do, use the cross product, which is very handy for more complicated and 3D kind of problems. And thanks for watching. Bye.